What's up guys, I'm Zach and welcome back to Workshop Edits. In today's video, I wanna take you through a brand new tool that I just got in my shop that I've been playing with for the past week. And that is the Order Laser Master 2 Pro and it's pretty dope. Now this video is not sponsored, but Order did send me their laser for free. So what you're gonna hear is my honest experience with the product, having had it in the shop for the past week, done a couple of projects with it and just kind of experimented with using laser CNC's, which I previously had no experience with. Now, most of what you see me do on this channel is woodworking with a little bit of metalworking, and I've recently dove into 3D printing. And so using a laser CNC is a totally new experience for me, but having you know had this in the shop and gone through the setup process with it, learned a little bit about the software and how just like the overall hardware function for this, I can honestly say that this is definitely a really easy to set up pretty overall plug and play kind of feature if you have any sort of experience with you know adobe illustrator and design and then porting that knowledge over into lightburn which is a software that you can use to actually apply designs to a laser cnc engraver like this machine now i know you guys can read the manual but just for some quick information this thing costs about 500 dollars and depending on where you are in the world uh, it might be a little bit more or less expensive depending on taxes and shipping so when you compare that to other diode lasers, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that is uh, later in the video. That seems like a pretty good entry level price for this type of machine and the capabilities of it. So this thing has um, emergency stop flame detection, meaning that you know if you're cutting something and this machine will pick up infrared light and if it's uh, detecting too much of that, it's gonna shut off and it's gonna protect your shop from burning down and it's gonna save your project. So really good safety feature built into it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that too because I ran into some trouble with how sensitive it is, but uh, that can all be adjusted once you kind of learn about the machine a little bit more. But again, great safety feature to have. This thing also has something called tilt detection, meaning that you know if I were to accidentally bump into the bench or the machine and this thing was mid-project, it's gonna detect that movement, stop it right in its tracks, allow you to reset the machine from the place that it right left off and allow you to then restart your project there. So that's, you know, you put a couple of hours or many days into a project, the last thing you wanna do is accidentally stumble into this thing, knock it out of its place and ruin your project. So again, great kind of feature overall to protect you from your own user error. In terms of speed, this thing can laser or cut at around 10,000 millimeters per minute which is crazy fast. Um, I haven't done anything even close to that. Um, and this thing moves, it feels like a mile a minute. You know, if you're into that kind of thing or you like to bang out projects quickly, you're trying to make money with this thing, just know that you have that feature built into it. And then lastly, it comes for some reason in inches. Maybe it's because I'm in the United States. Maybe if you're in Europe, it would come with the metric system, but you'll read online that it has a 400 by 400 millimeter engraving surface. Before we get into my positive and negative experiences with this thing and dive into my first real project with it, I just wanna talk a little bit about the assembly of it. To be perfectly honest, the instruction of this definitely leaves something to be desired. I actually ended up having to seek out additional video material to help me set up and walk through it. Again, total noob to this type of technology. Even though relatively simple, not a whole lot of pieces, it comes with everything you need in the box. The instructions just tiny, not that helpful. Um, so I was able to find a video online. The, whoever made this video did an incredible job walking you through how to do it. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it both in the description and then I'll leave it up here in case you do have this and like me, um, you're more than competent to assemble this thing, but for some reason I was just running into issues with it and it was really helpful in getting it set up and calibrated properly. All right, let's just real quickly talk about the difference between diode lasers and CO2 lasers or carbon dioxide lasers. So this is a diode laser. Those are also called semiconductor lasers. You're probably most familiar with them because they're the type of product that are used to write to a CD that you might be burning or a DVD or any other kind of small laser functions that don't require any gas. And that's the main difference between a CO2 laser or carbon dioxide and this diode laser. These are gonna be much smaller. They're not gonna require that gas. They're not gonna require a bunch of tubing set up uh, in order to get that gas to the laser. The overall kind of mechanism is gonna be a lot smaller because you're not gonna have that tubing that is in the way and kind of fixed in place, meaning that the mechanism itself for CO2 lasers is gonna have mirrors associated with it so that things can be delivered in a way that works around those systems and you're not gonna to have to have any sort of ventilation in your shop. So you know, putting it next to a wall and pushing those gases out so that you're not creating 
uh, a dangerous environment for you to be using that laser. So a lot of benefits to having something like this, not only cost-wise, but got a much smaller footprint. Obviously that has its limitations, but it's just like, if you're trying to get into this type of product and I was interested in it when they reached out to me, I was like, oh, this seems really cool. It makes it a lot more accessible for somebody who's just a little bit apprehensive to get into that technology. And then the last main functional difference of having a diode laser versus a CO2 model is really just your ability to have more variety in the types of materials you'd work with. So as far as I understand through my research, using a CO2 laser allows you to pretty much etch on anything. So that's things like metal, wood, uh, glossy materials, translucent materials, maybe like plexiglass, anything that might be like white, uh, kind of glossy type material. Whereas this thing, as far as I know, really only functions properly on metal and wood. But for me, that's pretty much all I work on in this shop. So this is a great piece of technology for me to have and for the types of projects that I do. All right, so let's go through the positives and the negatives of this product that I've experienced having it in my shop for the past month. So let's start with the negatives. So this thing is actually really robust. When you pick it up, it feels very sturdy. It's made out of really nice machine materials. But what I did find was that it's easy to bump into and it's actually not heavy enough that if you are using the laser and trying to have it move too quickly, it can actually knock itself off from its origin. And I ran into that with a project um, and it basically ruined the project. So that is something to consider is when you're actually doing a project is to one, figure out a way to actually anchor this down so that it's in a fixed position. And then two, you're not moving the laser at such a speed that it's gonna actually slowly knock itself off the origin because it can ruin your project and it did it for me and it was a pain in the ass, honestly. Second, the way this thing is designed, and I'll go to a close-up for this, is the wire on top that delivers the G-code for the laser to actually move can actually get stuck in between the Y-axis track and the cutter head, I suppose. And what that can do actually is cause an issue where once it gets caught in between that, the laser is no longer able to return to the proper origin, which causes it to jitter because it's trying to move back there and that was another instance where because that happened, it knocked the laser from its origin off center. And I spent a really long time trying to get that back centered exactly where it was. When you're dealing with something that etches in such a fine, we're talking like fractions of a millimeter, having something slightly get knocked off is gonna cause you huge problems in trying to create an accurate project, especially if you're trying to do multiple passes on it. Then I think the last kind of main negative thing that I've run into with this is there's just not a whole lot of information out there about QA and certain issues that you have with this product. So the software that I've been using with this is called Lightburn. Now this won't be a tutorial on Lightburn, but basically Lightburn exists as a technology to work with basically any type of laser out there when you actually set up and purchase Lightburn, which I think cost $40 for a lifetime membership or subscription to have it, which by the way, totally worth it, highly recommend it. I'll link that in the description. It will detect your laser type and it's gonna calibrate your working space for it. It's gonna allow you to apply all of the different types of settings from Lightburn into that laser and calibrate it properly and just you know manipulate it as you see fit. That being said, because you are working with a software that is not proprietary to this laser, there really isn't a community out there for you to QA issues. So for example, I set this thing up about a month ago. It really only has been about a week and a half that I've really been able to dive into it because I struggled to find an answer on why I kept setting off this darn emergency button. Now, obviously I want that safety, but basically what I was finding was every single time I would start the laser within two seconds, it would shut off because the sensitivity of the emergency stop button was so high that it basically would detect any sort of light. And now that's not just flame light, that's light coming in through a window. I'm in a garage shop. A lot of people work out of their garages or have windows and any sort of sunlight or infrared light would basically trip this up. So I found the solution to it. You basically just have to shut it off or lower the sensitivity to it. I don't know if this is necessarily a negative reflection on the laser itself, but it's something that you should be prepared for is that there's just like not a whole lot of information out there for you to work through issues as somebody who is trying to learn both how to use a piece of hardware and a new software like Lightburn, which I was totally new to. So just be aware of that. Again, it's not like a negative, but it's something we're talking about in this video. And one more thing, which actually kind of piggybacks on the idea that there's not a whole lot of information out there for you to QA your issues. I was finding that when I was working on this project behind me, which I'll explain a little bit more uh, in a second, that the laser would be going, everything would be working properly, and suddenly it would stop 
it took me a really long time to figure out what was happening was that because I had built the project to basically the max uh, cutting width of this thing or max um, etching lasering width of the overall surface is that because there's overlap settings built into the laser basically kind of over lasering so that there's no kind of um, empty spaces between when you're making solid surfaces so if you're making um, some sort of design that has the whole thing lasered out you're going to have some overlap of the laser built into it if you work all the way up to the edges and you have that overlap built into how the g-code is going to run it actually is just going to automatically stop because it's going to tell you that the surfaces are outside of the cutting zone. So let's talk about the positives of this thing. Just overall, while I did say that it was kind of annoying having to stumble through and not having a, a larger kind of community to QA through some of my problems, the fact is the more that you stumble through your own problems and teach yourself in the process and just having experimented with this, done a couple of projects, figured out how to fix a lot of the kind of basic errors that were preventing me from actually putting this thing through the ringer and figuring out how I, you know, it could be useful in my shop, uh, the more I'm really enjoying having it. And it's been just a, like a fun thing to have in the shop and a fun thing to just think about like, what else could I laser cut? How can I make money with this thing? How can I design projects that are more advanced or have a more personal touch to it? So that's been really fun. The second thing, which I already touched on this, but this integrates really well with Lightburn. And while I was very unfamiliar with that software, I have a lot of experience with Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, other design softwares, and I am semi-knowledgeable having done a little bit of 3D printing and just working with G-code and 2D and 3D spaces. And if you have any sort of working knowledge of those things and you have any interest in getting into introductory lasering or engraving, like overall, pretty easy transition to take that knowledge and figure out how to use this thing really quickly. While you might not know everything and Lightburn is a new software to use, uh, you're gonna quickly figure out kind of the key parts of it and there's tons of information out there about how to use that software, much like you would find for any of the other kind of Adobe products uh, out in the world. And then lastly, something that I haven't actually done, but this thing I believe can cut up to five millimeters of material. So if you are, again, looking to make money on this project, looking to create projects that you otherwise just really couldn't do by hand in your shop with kind of the basic set of tools, at least the tools that I have, like five millimeters is a pretty thick material and that you can create a lot of really cool things that people will want to buy. So if you're looking to get into lasering, if you feel like you have a good idea that you want to experiment with but requires you know, CNC or design or more complicated cuts and you know products integrated into them that you just can't do with a basic set of materials, this is a great product for doing it. So I would recommend getting it. This is a great kind of foot in the door thing to kind of kickstart your ideas to life. All right, so hopefully this video hasn't been an information overload. Hopefully if you are interested in the sort of digital fabrication space or you are interested in just getting into laser engraving or etching or any of that kind of stuff, finding ways to add personal touches, create complicated projects, or just apply any of your kind of design knowledge that you have into a new fabrication technique, you know, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. So what I wanna do now is just take you through the first kind of couple of projects that I did with it that I think, you know, one of them was just a very like simple, straightforward project that I could see how could easily make somebody money if they really put their time and effort into it. And another thing is just a very functional thing that I think was helpful to have for this laser. So one of the easiest things to do with this laser is calibrate it. So um, there is a separate piece of hardware that you can buy which you can really help dial in the height of the laser. You know, the way this thing works is it focuses that laser on the smallest kind of most refined point possible and that's gonna give you the most accurate etching or cutting. Uh, if you don't do that, it's just, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna look good. It's gonna be a really weak thing or it's just gonna ruin your project. But one of the best things about this one in particular is even without that mechanism, I have found that it is really easy to calibrate. Um, it comes with this little piece that just fits in a little 3D printed thing that attaches to the base. You use this thing to basically raise this up and down. And once the laser hits the top of it, you know that it's at the perfect height. So depending on what material thickness you have underneath it, all you gotta do is loosen these bolts here, raise it up, slip this underneath it, and put it back down. Super easy to calibrate. The other thing is it comes with this orange shield on it and a set of safety glasses. So you're gonna wanna have that orange shield on at all times and you technically don't need the safety glasses that come with it because it's gonna diffuse that laser enough to where it's not harmful to your eyes. But I always end up wearing these green glasses anyways just 
for my own safety. So with all that said, the thing that I was finding most difficult in my experimentation with it was just actually figuring out exactly where the home point was on my thing, even with firing up like the test origin point on Lightburn and then getting my materials squared up. So what I did was I hopped into Illustrator. I designed a 15 by 15 inch grid with labels and then bought some MDF material, broke that down into just a two foot by two foot square and applied that design through Lightburn so that now my laser can sit on top of that in a fixed position. And I know that when I go to cut anything or etch or laser anything, I can position my material on top of that. And I know that if I line it up this way perfectly with the grid and this way with it, and uh, you know, in the bottom corner, which I guess is gonna be this bottom corner, it's gonna be squared and perfect. And I'm not gonna have to worry about, you know, mistakenly starting the etching of something off or doing it in like a non-perpendicular square way. So I'll leave a link in the description also to just this grid file I did if you have this laser. It's been hugely valuable just to have visually, you know, see your cutting surface and line it up. All right, so to wrap this up, having looked at all the positives and negatives of this thing, having gone through uh, the total assembly of it and actually kind of stumbling through that and then figuring it out, having figured out how to use a brand new software with it, and then also just understanding, you know, all of the kind of hurdles that I had to overcome for me to actually use this thing properly and actually really enjoy using the product now. I put all of that knowledge to the test and created what I thought was actually a really cool kind of first project that applied both my design knowledge to it, working with Lightburn to make sure everything was squared up, using something that I had actually built to work in tandem with the laser, and it actually came together really good. I don't have a whole lot of footage of it, but basically what I did was uh, milled up and glued up a panel of maple together and then on that maple, I have some friends who are getting married and they met in a place called Santa Barbara, California. And so what I did was hop into a Google product, which actually allows you to design stylized maps using just black and white line art that you can do, which I found had no idea existed. But if you are looking to create any sort of like line art of maps or specific locations, super cool software that I'll all link below just in case you are interested. Having then had a working file of a really cool map, I was able to bring that into Photoshop, add some text to it, apply that design to the grid in Lightburn, get my material all squared up, and then go through the process of etching it. And it came out really freaking cool. All right, so just to wrap up this video, obviously this wasn't a very you know straight to paper, direct type of building project, but for me, who's getting more and more interested in expanding beyond just woodworking, you know, 3D printing, digital kind of CNC lasering etching, potentially having a bigger CNC machine down the road. This felt like a build project to me from just understanding how the hardware of this thing works, understanding how to do uh, new functionality with laser engraving software, which I had no experience with, and then actually taking all of the kind of knowledge and kind of trials and tribulations of working through a totally new thing to me, putting that knowledge to the test, going through you know, testing the laser and figuring out how to use it and figuring out like the right calibrations for it. Um, and then applying that knowledge using some of the design type experience that I have, integrating it into Lightburn as a software, applying it to a series of projects, felt like a really cool experience build type video to me. And for anybody who is interested in getting into this type of tech, I just hope that this video provided you with at least one piece of you know, inspiration or information that would help you get into it. If you are interested in learning more about this or you wanna support my channel, there's a link below to purchase this. Any purchases for that will help give me a little bit of kickback and show that you, know, you guys are supporting my channel. So thank you in advance for anybody who does click on that link. If you are new to the channel or this is your first video, I just wanna say welcome. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time on whatever it is that I'm working on. Bye.